I love starting at level 1 in Dungeons and Dragons. Have I lost anyone yet? Cool. Now that the riffraff is gone, allow me to elaborate. For those that don't play D&D, in D&D, a character's overall potential and competence is measured on a number scale of 1 to 20. These numbers are known as levels. The higher the level, the more powerful the character. Low-level characters often deal with local problems like bandits or giant rats. High-level characters, on the other hand, are capable of fighting things like dragons or devils. In a long-running D&D campaign, the PCs, or player characters, will steadily gain levels as a campaign goes on. This is meant to both reflect their increase in power and to provide new options to the players. Now, starting at level 1 in D&D is a pretty hot topic within the community. Some people love it, others hate it. I personally am of the former party, but that doesn't mean people who like starting at higher levels are wrong. Hey everyone, I'm Ryu, and today we'll be discussing level 1 in Dungeons and Dragons. We'll cover what level 1 means, how it's represented in the rules, and whether or not starting at level 1 will work for your campaign. The Mechanics of Level 1 Looking at the early chapters of the player's handbook, we're given a play-by-play -play on how to create a level 1 character. A lot of newcomers assume this means you need to start at level 1, since rules for creating high-level characters aren't really found until much later in the book. Despite first impressions, this isn't the case. The book is laid out this way because the designers of 5th edition can't assume you've played the game before, and don't want to risk hiding essential information deep within the book. In the Dungeon Master's Guide, examples are given for DMs on how to start campaigns at higher levels, complete with a table for starting wealth and magic items. This leads into my first point about Level 1 D&D, the mechanics behind it. Pointing back to what I said earlier, the rulebook is laid out the way it is to make things easy for newcomers. This is why the book puts level 1 rules for characters and classes out front and center. Anything past that point is for players who have already statted out their character for level 1, and by extension, have already covered the basics for their character. More experienced players can go about character creation in their own process, but that's a conversation for a different day. Okay, so moving past character creation, there's one big mechanical reason to start a game at level 1. That reason being complexity. A good rule of thumb for any RPG is that the more powerful your character is, the more you have to know and keep track of in order to run them effectively. We'll call this rule power equals complexity. As your character gains levels, the typical RPG things happen. You gain more health, you do more damage, and your stats go up. On top of that though, you gain new abilities, slash options, slash things to keep track of. We'll use the fighter class as an example. Taking into account only class and stats abilities, this is the character sheet for a level 1 fighter. Seems simple enough. Now here's the sheet for a level 5 fighter. Already, there's been a significant increase in the number of things the player can do in combat. Pushing it even farther, here's the sheet for a level 17 fighter. Yeah. And the fighter is considered by far one of the easiest classes to run, so you can imagine what an epic level spellcaster sheet would look like. We can also see examples of power equals complexity in video games. Most games will introduce new mechanics and abilities to the player as they progress. This works both on a narrative level and a mechanical level. If the player is given every possible tool or power right from the get-go, they're likely to be overwhelmed by the sheer number of options available. If mechanics are introduced gradually, however, the player has more time to process the information they've already been given, and will be able to more seamlessly adapt to the newly introduced rules. We often see this in the form of tutorials. And hey, levels 1 and 2 of 5th edition are known as the tutorial levels. How about that? But even outside the tutorial levels, few games start the players out at level 10+, plus because it just isn't practical. By starting at level 1 or other low levels, you have a lot of time to get the hang of running your character's abilities. By the time high level play rolls around, you've likely become competent at using your early level abilities and are prepared to use your late game ones. Even really experienced players can have trouble running an epic level character with no early level practice. And I would know, because it happens to me all the time. Mostly with NPCs. So I had this idea for a 14th level cleric wizard combo. With all that being said though, level 1 isn't always the ideal starting place. First level characters are... weak. Like, really weak. They might as well have a big warning label that says, CAUTION! Fragile, pinned to their chest. Based on hit dice and con mods, the average first level character probably has around 10 hit points. One lucky crit from a goblin and you are done. Side note, do not throw goblins at your players at first level, it will never go well. 
All pen and paper RPGs have luck as a factor, but level 1 is where it can really become an issue. The players are so weak at this stage that they might get taken out of a fight just because the DM had one or two lucky rolls. Which isn't a great feeling, might I add. This is also where the players are most limited by their abilities. Spellcasters only have a few spell slots, and martial classes don't have their special abilities yet. Taking all of this into account, both the positives and the negatives, most experienced groups prefer to start around level 3. Level 3 is where most classes earn their archetypes, i.e. where you leave the tutorial levels and become the thing your class says you are. You don't need to memorize pages of abilities, but you also don't have the durability of a kobold. Roleplaying Level 1 Alright, so this is really going to depend on how the DM is choosing to represent levels in their campaign. But for this, we're going to think of a level 1 character the same way the player's handbook does. The PHP defines a level 1 character as inexperienced in the adventuring world. Things like knights or assassins from the NPC index will completely destroy a first level party, for example. This leads into the narrative reasons for why a lot of people dislike playing first level characters. Because it really does put a limiter on what you can do with your backstory. Your first level fighter is by no means a famous general, and your first level wizard certainly ain't Gandalf. Some people, like myself, enjoy writing backstories for inexperienced characters. They like the fantasy of starting out from nothing and growing into a capable adventurer. A lot of people will even say that character weaknesses are more fun to RP than strengths, and I'm inclined to agree. And when you're high level, casting teleportation spells and hopping between planes, you can look back and remember where you started. If those days ever come. Unfortunately, one big thing to take into account here is that most long-term D&D campaigns end prematurely. Groups split, schedules don't line up, or some big ugly problem brings a campaign to a halt. A lot of players never get to see their characters grow into epic level adventurers for reasons that are just out of their control. So many players will argue that starting at higher levels gives you a much better chance of actually having those high-end adventures. Campaigns that actually make it to level 20 are one in a million. Which sucks, but it's an inevitability for most people. Back to level 1 and role-playing, though. As the PHB implies, level 1 characters tend to be pretty young and inexperienced. For many of the PCs, the first adventure will be the first real trial they face since leaving their homes. And at level 1, the other PCs are also probably some of the first people a PC has met since becoming an adventurer. Or they could all be childhood friends. That mostly depends on the players. All that factored in, it can be really interesting to see how the PCs react and grow from their early experiences, and how it may shape them going forward. The same can be said for more wizened characters. It basically plays into the theory of how we're shaped by the people around us. But even with all that taken into account, sometimes people just don't want to play incompetent characters. They prefer the greater creative freedom that comes with creating a more seasoned character. A level 1 character might be pretty young or inexperienced, but a level 9 character has probably been through a lot in their life, and it can be fun to figure out how their experiences have shaped them as people. That's not to say high-level characters have to be old and wizened, or that low-level characters have to be young and naive. A high-level wizard could just be a prodigy in their field, or a middle-aged fighter could have picked up a sword for the first time after leaving home. Much like in real life, you're never too young or old to start growing as a person. And I think D&D is a great medium for exploring that idea. Whether or not your campaign should start at level 1 really depends on what type of game you want to run. How experienced you and your friends are with the game also plays a big factor. Most of, if not every campaign I've run has begun at level 1. Some people enjoy it, and others don't. I also have weird tastes when it comes to this game though. Also remember, you don't need to take the PHB's word as law. There's no rule stating that level 1 characters have to be weak in the context of your world. Maybe you want to evoke the older editions, where being a first level wizard is a great accomplishment in and of itself. Whatever your decision, just make sure you communicate with your players on how class levels are represented in your world. It'll help alleviate the confusion and frustration later down the line. I hope you all enjoyed this video on level 1. By no means the most popular level to start a campaign. But I'm weird. As per usual, I publish content on DMs Guild on the first Saturday of every month. This month's content is The Oath of the Drifter, a paladin archetype. A lot of what I publish is pay what you want, so feel free to check it out if you're interested. Till next time.